What's up everybody? So I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to edit gaming videos for YouTube and the program I'm going to be using for this is called Adobe After Effects and basically some of the steps that I'm going to be doing can be used the same in other editing programs but I'm going to be using After Effects because it's most familiar with me. Um, basically I recorded all of my videos with um, Fraps and it's real common to record gaming with Fraps. You can also use DX Story. Um, it works well and what Fraps does is it breaks it up into all these little files which I'm going to show you how to import all this stuff and bring it in there. Um, if you use DX Story it's probably going to give you one file which just makes things like way easier on you. But basically to start off when you open up After Effects um, you can just do File New Project and that will just bring you pretty much to where I am right now. Everything's blank. Um, <clears throat> basically after that what we're going to want to do is import all of our video files so basically what I do is I just grab everything in order so I start like this is my first fraps file and this is my last fraps file so I just select the first one and then hit shift on my keyboard and then click the last one and it selects everything in order so I have 60 videos here if you hit show more details this is going to tell you like your total length and this is important um, that way we know how long to make our timeline. So this is 2 hours, 6 minutes, and 49 seconds worth of videos, and it's 233 gigabytes of stuff. So when you record with, with Fraps, it breaks it into AVI, and they're really big. Like Each file is like 3 to 4 gigabytes, which is really large. I, I mean, it all depends on like how big you are. Your file size um, depends on... like your resolution you're recording at and your frame rate you're recording at but like a little tip is I don't know I usually record in 1080p and then when I upload to YouTube I resize everything to be 720p in all honesty you don't really need 1080p for YouTube um, so 720p usually works really well and it gives you a nice file size that you can upload fairly quickly. Um, if you do want to do 1080p, go for it. It's just your file size is going to be a lot bigger and it's going to take you a bit longer. But if you want that quality, then by all means, go for it. Um, another thing you want to do if you are using Fraps is you want to make sure that you're not recording in 60 frames per second using Fraps. There's no need to do that. Um, basically you only want to be recording in 30 frames per second because you, that's all you will even see on YouTube. So just keep that in mind that will help reduce some of your file sizes because if you are recording in 60 frames per second then your file size is going to be a lot larger. Okay so anyways let's get back into this. Okay so I selected all my videos and I'm just going to, going to drag them in right here in the project area up here. So once I drag them in, they are all in here and they're going to be in order from the order I selected them in my uh, folder over here. There's also other ways you can import. You can do file import, multiple files and stuff like that if you want to do it that way. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. You'll just click and shift click all the way and it should open all of them. And you'll want to import them as footage. It's fine. So that's another way you can do it, but I like to just drag and drop in there. So after that, we need to create a composition which is, allows us to make a timeline down here and start editing all of our videos down in this section. The way you can make a composition is you can do File New Composition, or you can click this little icon right here that says Create a New Composition. Um, those are the standard ways to do it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my first file, and I'm just going to drag it down into this area down here where it says none and just drop it and that's going to auto create a composition for me as you see here it's just named the first my first file or whatever and that what that does is it when I go to composition now and I go to composition settings this auto created a composition that is the same you know the width and height that I want it's the frame rate that I want it's just not the duration that I want so this is where we're going to change based off of that length number that we found before. So I know that my composition needs to be at least 2 hours and 6 minutes, so I'm going to make it 2 hours and 10 minutes, just so I have a little extra. So I'm, this first um, number here is hours, 
This is minutes here, so I'm going to put 10. And I don't really need to worry about seconds. And then the last one is frames. So now I have a composition that's going to be 2 hours and 10 minutes. So down here you'll see that there's little mountains, and this is to zoom in and zoom out. So if you zoom out here, um, basically we can see now that we have a, a long composition that's going to be really, <laughs> really long, so we can put all of our videos in. So basically now we have our first video file in there, so we need to grab all the other ones. So I don't need to reselect this one because it's already in here. As you can see, the source name is 3943. 3943 is already in there. So I'm going to grab the second one and go all the way down to the bottom again and hit Shift and then click on the bottom. That way it selects all the other ones and I'm just going to drag them down in here. So what this is going to do is this is going to just bring all my video files in order down into my composition, which is good. So now we're seeing that, oh my gosh, they're not lined up, and I'm going to have to move all these 60 files by myself to line them up. Well, After Effects has some cool little nifty tricks. Um, if you do select your first file, again, hit Shift on your keyboard, and click the last file so everything is selected. And then you can just right-click on any one of these files, and then go to Keyframe Assistant, and then Sequence Layers. Um, you do not need to check overlap, just click OK, and what that's going to do is it's just going to basically edit everything for you into one giant thing that you don't have to worry about any gaps or anything like that. Everything is just one continuous movie file basically now. So basically now what we need to do is get into kind of the cutting of the video. Um, basically what I do is I do, you know, f about 15 minute video segments for my YouTube. So what I usually do is this bar right here allows you to cut your render. So I bring it down to about 15 minutes and I kind of zoom in and then I basically when I have it about the 15 minute mark and then I grab this first bar which allows me to do my like render and if I do like a render preview here if I hit zero on my keyboard it does like a render preview. So that will allow me to basically just do a render preview so I can see where my video is oh going to start and stop. You guys just landed! Oh, they're just husks so though. They're not going to do anything to me. So that's a fine, that's a good spot to just end my video. So I know that now that's a good spot so I'm going to just leave the end segment there but I need to make sure I drag this uh, beginning segment all the way back to zero. That way when I start to render, it'll render from zero. So, so now, basically, what I need to do is just um, go ahead and do composition and make movie. And basically, what that's going to do is that's going to bring up a render queue. And basically, what I need to do now that I'm doing this render queue is if I first click on best settings, this is just all your general render settings. So if you did happen to record using fraps with 60 frames per second, what you want to do is you want to click this little um, circle right here that says use this frame rate and you're going to want to set it to 30. That way when you're actually doing your final render, it's only going to be rendering at 30 frames per second instead of 60. Um, what I can do is just use comp frame rate because I already recorded in 30 frames per second. Um, all this is pretty standard. This should all be default. It should be fine. Just make sure your quality set at best, uh, your resolution is full, and all that. But it should already already be set um, using the, the default settings. So you should be fine. And again, it'll tell you down here what the duration of your, your composition and all that stuff is. So what you want to do now is um, just hit lossless. This is basically what, where all of your actual compression settings are and this is what makes your video look good and make the file size small for YouTube. So these settings here could be used, you could, they might be really similar on other editing programs. So if you are watching this and you're not using After Effects, this area might help you just to help you know, make your videos look nicer and be a f smaller file size to, to upload to YouTube. 
So the first thing you want to do is you want to check the audio output. This allows you to have audio in your video. So and the default, I usually just use the default, which is 48 kilohertz, um, which is fine. And basically what I do next is I check the resize box and I say resize to and I just do 1280 and what that's going to do when I hit enter is automatically, oh crap, sorry about that. Um, don't hit enter, you can just click off of it and it'll <laughs> automatically set it. Um, basically what that did is it resize, it's going to resize it to 1280 by 720 and it automatically changed the height value to 720 because I have locked aspect ratio of 16 by 9 which is HD you know aspect ratio so this is how I get 720p from that 1080p so that's what I when I finish rendering this this video is only going to render in 1280 by 720 which is 720p versus 1080 and that's what I want to do for YouTube because it makes it smaller and it's much easier so the the most important part now that we need to do is the format. Um, by default, it's probably going to be AVI if you're using Windows. If you're using After Effects on a, a Macintosh computer, um, it's probably going to default be like, um, I don't know, like MOV or something, QuickTime Movie, wherever that is. I don't know, somewhere in here. But it's going to be like QuickTime Movie by default, which is an MOV. Basically, you don't want to use either of those for YouTube. YouTube allows them, but AVI and MOV is not the best quality and the file size isn't that great. So what you want to use is called H.264. So if you're not using After Effects, um, whatever editing program you're using, um, you can also use H.264 with that, I'm sure. So if you click H.264, this is going to be up, bring up your standard H.264 settings. And what you're going to want to do now is hit Format Options. This is going to bring all the settings up for our, our, your H.264 options so I have all mine it's already set because you know I've already I use this all the time and I render stuff all the time so it's by default it's already setting at what I normally set it to um, yours may look a little different than this and the actual options window might look different depending on what version of After Effects you're using I'm using CS5 right now um, but all the settings should all look really similar so the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure your profile is set to high um, next thing you want to do is make sure your level is set to 5.1. Next thing you want to do, in my, by default, I think it's set on CBR. Just change it to VBR pass and our VBR one pass. So you want to hit that. And you're going to want to set your target bit rate to 6 and your maximum bit rate to 9. Um, basically, what that's going to do is going to give you really good quality and a pretty small file size. Um, that way, you know, you don't have a ridiculously sized video to get a good quality and all that kind of stuff. So you make sure you're really careful with these settings because if you do bump them up really high, you're you're not really going to see much improvement in your quality, but you're going to see a huge hit in the file size of your video. It's going to get really, really large. So just be careful. Um, I use, like I said, 6 and 9, and the quality looks really great, and the file size is pretty reasonable. So next you want to hit the Audio tab. Um, your Kodak, you want to use AAC, which is really standard for most sorts of um, good audio. Um, if you've ever used like XSplit or something like that, you want to use your AAC Kodak for that. Um, any sort of recording, AAC is usually the best audio Kodak to use. So if you're using another, uh, again, if you're using another editing program, just make sure you use AAC if you can, if it's available. Um, if not, next best might be MP3, and I'm not sure on the settings on the MP3 or anything like that. But anyway, so AAC, make sure you have that set up. Um, you want to make sure your audio quality is set to high, and then your bitrate you want to set to 192. By default, I think it's set to 128. It's not. It's okay. It's not bad, but I usually set it to 192. It's it's good. Sounds great, and should be good. And down here, your advanced settings, it should be set to bitrate by default, so don't worry about that. Uh, if you click the multiplexer tab, all this should be de the default settings, which is MP4. That is the file um, that we're going to be, it's going to make. And the stream um, compatibility, is, is just leave it at standard, that's fine. 
So that's basically all of your render settings and now you're going to hit OK. And what that's going to do is it's going to make sure everything's going to render it the way you want. So the last step now is just going to hit Output 2. And this is where you're going to save your file. So I just, you know, save all of my stuff in certain render folders. Like I have my, I just organize everything into like the game, the session, all that kind of stuff. So if I'm doing Mass Effect Session 3, I go into my renders folder and I name it, you know, ME3 episode, whatever episode number it is. So then once you have that, it's going to save it as an MP4 file and you're just going to hit save. And then after you do that, you're just going to hit the render button and it's going to start rendering. And you're going to see it render. And I'm not going to render for you guys because I don't need to render this, but you're going to start seeing a progress bar right here and it's going to fill up with yellow and it's going to tell you you know the estimated remaining time how, how long you've been rendering when it started how much ram it's using all that kind of stuff and then when it's done it'll make a little noise saying that it's done or whatever so then after you've done that what you want to do for the next video is you're going to drag this little bar right here which is your timeline or your little i don't know what it's technically what it's called but you can just drag this and this is what is actually gonna show so I usually just drag it to the end and I hold shift on my keyboard and drag it to the end and what that does is it snaps it to the end of right here so I know that that's exactly where I ended my other video then I'm gonna click on the actual last frame our last section video which is this one and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna grab the end of this and hold shift and let it snap right there and then what I'm gonna do is just delete all these upper videos because I don't need them anymore and then I'm gonna again select the top one and go all the way down and hit shift and click and that's gonna select all the videos now and I'm just gonna slide them over that way I know that this next video is going to start exactly where the other one ended and then I'm going to just place it all the way up to zero frames. It doesn't snap very well at the zero frame mark so what you kind of have to do is you do have to zoom in a bit and kind of fiddle around with it until you make it start at frame zero. So I use this scale a lot and I put it as close as I can and then I zoom in to the frames and then make sure that it's starting on frame zero so you don't if you start on frame one, it's going to have one black frame. You don't want that. So make sure it starts on frame zero. And then same thing, you're going to repeat the process. You're going to just drag this over. You're going to hit zero on your keyboard, which is going to bring up a RAM preview. And you're going to find the spot where you want to make your next video. So obviously that was a bad spot because it was in the middle of a cutscene. So maybe we need something like this. So again, if we press shift, we can snap this to the timeline and say that's a good spot then we bring this back to zero and then we repeat process we go to composition and then make movie again and that will render out then you know the next episode so basically that's kind of what I do and how I edit my videos in After Effects um, I hope it helped you guys and those the, if you render it your videos this way they'll be a great file size um, I'll show you like these renders you know they're only 661 megabytes which is still kind of big but it's not that bad it only takes for a 15 minute video it only takes about 45 minutes to upload to YouTube which is not that bad so I hope it helped you guys um, again if you're not using After Effects just make sure you're using the H.264 compression and that will help you in whatever you know editing software you're using that should make you know the quality really nice and your video size just really small depending on your settings so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and please like the video if you liked it and if you like to see some of my gameplay and stuff just please hit the subscribe button on my YouTube channel alright thanks guys appreciate it